Oh, so my doctor, he told me to watch what I'm eating, told me to read food labels. I'm in the store reading the Fig Newtons label. I've always liked Fig Newtons. I'm trying to see if it's okay to eat them, and everything looked fine, the fat content, everything. I looked at the serving size, two cookies. Who the hell eats two cookies? I ate Fig Newtons by the sleeve. Two sleeves is a serving size. I open them both and eat them like a tree chipper. Fig Newton shavings coming off the side. Then I put a Newton catcher and empty that bag out as a snack. What the hell are they talking about? Two Fig Newtons. They're the size of a poaching stamp. You want another one? Oh, I don't know. I've already had two whole entire Fig Newtons. Maybe I could try to muscle one more down, but I don't think I'm gonna... Mmm, right, I'm stuck with the rafters. So today we're talking about nutrition. And ironically, I literally just polished off an entire candy bar just before deciding to film this. I'm not sure about the timing, if I question my judgment, but you know, that's life. We don't always make the best choices, but our goal is to understand nutrition, to understand nutritional deficits and, and guide our patients in making the right nutritious choices for their body. So go ahead and study with me today. If you need a candy bar, you know, you do you boo, because I sure did. Uh, go ahead and get up Giddens chapter 16 and Davis chapter 27. We'll be talking about the concept of nutrition. So for this concept, you're going to be completing your study guide, again, version B, and then completing these objectives for the lesson. You can pause here if you want to write these down. They're pretty much the same ones that we get kind of every time we're doing a lot of these, so nothing new here to see. Let's go ahead and begin by defining and describing the concept of nutrition. So nutrition is the science of optimal cellular metabolism and its impact on health and disease. In other words, it's the study of food um, and how food affects the body and how that effect influences our health. And adequate nutrition is essential for wellness. So the scope of the concept ranges from optimal to suboptimal nutrition and on a continuum from insufficient nutrition to perfect nutrition to an excess nutrition. And either ends of that spectrum from insufficient nutrition to excess of nutrition are both considered to be malnutrition. Now, as a review of the anatomy and physiology related to nutrition, we of course have oral intake, the digestion of that food, the absorption of that food into the bloodstream, the elimination of any food waste, and then the cellular metabolism, where the individual cells of the body are using the um, macro and micronutrients that, um, that were ingested. Now, as I mentioned, there's two types of malnutrition on the scope of, of nutrition. Insufficient nutrition is on one end of the spectrum, um, and it can be caused by an acute, uh, sorry, an insufficient calorie intake, insufficient intake of one or more specific nutrients. There can be starvation-related nutrition, malnutrition, acute disease-related malnutrition, or even long-term chronic disease-related malnutrition where there is insufficient nutrition. And an excess nutrition is another kind of malnutrition on the other end of the spectrum. And that uh, arises from an excess of calorie intake where the calorie um, amount of intake of calories exceeds the body's need for those calories. This can also happen on a micronutrient level um, where a specific um, vitamin or mineral, for example, the, the, the patient has consumed an excess of one specific micronutrient, which can also be an excess of nutrition. Now, of course, every macronutrient and micronutrient has specific functions and are important for good, adequate nutrition. And a deficit in any of those can cause effects of malnutrition. So protein is what helps build either the building blocks of our body. Carbohydrate is our body's fuel. 
fatty acids help build things like muscle and then the micronutrients like vitamins and minerals are necessary at the cellular level, level um, to provide a variety of different functions in our body. And effects, there can be effects of deficiency or excess related to the specific function of that micro or macronutrient. So what do nutrients do anyway? Well, they're the building blocks for cells and for tissues. They give us energy. They help maintain, manufacture, and repair cells. And they're found in foods. And then they're converted in our bodies and to be able that the body can use them through metabolism. Carbohydrates are one of the ma macronutrients and they're the primary body source of energy and they're converted into sugars in the body. Proteins are what help are the building blocks of our tissues. And then lipids are fats, uh, the key component of lipoproteins and they are the backup fuel source for the body and also provide organ insulation and um, uh, thermoregulation to protect us from cold weather. Now, the carbohydrates, the protein, and the lipids are the macronutrients, the big things that we need for life and sustaining, but there's also micronutrients that regulate different body functions, and they're only needed in very small amount, which is why they're called micronutrients, and it's things like vitamins and minerals. While small, they still have a significant effect on the body. And don't forget about water. Remember, water makes up the largest percent of our body weight, and it use, is used to form tissues and transport substances and maintain body temperatures, and is involved in chemical processes, and it is essential for life. So let's talk about what risk factors uh, would be there for inadequate nutrition. If we talk about populations that are at risk, all individuals are potentially at risk for malnutrition, but certainly socioeconomic status or race or ethnicity can influence the risk. And it seems that the populations at the greatest risk for problems with nutrition are the typical ones you're seeing at greatest risk for most things, the very young and the very old. Now, there are certainly a variety of things that affect nutrition, um, developmental stage, and this includes lactating women when they're breastfeeding. Um, their nutritional needs and demands of their body are different. Educational level and just basic knowledge of nutrition can really vary from person to person, and it certainly uh, impacts the ability of a person to provide good nutrition for themselves based on the knowledge that they have. Now, there are a variety of other factors that affect nutrition, things like knowledge of nutrition, lifestyle choices, vegetarianism, um, which can be done just as an ethical decision, as a health decision, or even for spiritual reasons. Um, some people really eat for health or eat for weight loss. There are ethnic, cultural, and religious practices that all inv involve food. Think about how central food is to our everyday lives. Now, certainly disease processes have functional limitations um, that can impact what you know, nutrition is for one person over another person. The nutritional needs of one person, depending on their disease states, may be different than the nutritional needs of another. And then medications can certainly um, impact nutrition as well as the different special diets people are on. So what kind of things would you notice when an individual is experiencing inadequate nutrition? Well, the first thing you'd wanna do is take a good health history and really get an understanding and interview the patient to find out what's going on. Ask about their nutritional intake. Ask if they have any diet restrictions. Have they had any changes in their appetite or in their intake? Any changes in weight? What about their medical history? Is there anything pertinent and relevant from their medical history that might influence their nutritional status? What are their current medications? What are their current medical treatments? Do they have any food allergies? And what's their family history or social history? Because all of these things really factor into the diets that we eat on a daily basis. In terms of examination findings, you're gonna be driven by that chief complaint and the presenting symptoms. So what is the patient complaining of and what symptoms are you noticing? 
you can do a general observation. Do they look well nourished? Do they look like they are healthy or do they look undernourished or overnourished? And then you can take anthropomorphic measurements like body weight. Um, uh, you can do uh, measurements of different body parts with a tape measure. Um, and you can also do the body fat measurement as well. And some findings of poor nutrition uh, would be alterations in vital signs, poor skin trigger or poor or delayed wound healing, uh, a concave, meaning in, like uh, dipped in, abdomen or ascites, where there's um, a giant swelling of the abdomen. Or you could also note a change in muscle mass, because remember, we have to have good nutrients in order to build muscle. There are a number of diagnostic tests associated with nutrition. Albumin measures protein. Blood glucose measures sugar in the blood. Hemoglobin A1C kind of gives you that bigger picture, the longer picture of um, glucose control over time in the blood. A lipid profile is going to tell you about how much fat you have in your bloodstream. Electrolytes are things like sodium and potassium, those trace minerals that are so vital to our functioning, but we need in small amounts. And then hemoglobin and hematocrit, um, which indicate, indicate things like uh, red blood cell count and how if we're anemic, if we're iron deficient. So all of these are types of diagnostic tests that can clue us in about nutritional status. So let's go ahead and talk about what kind of nursing and collaborative interventions are appropriate to optimize patient nutrition, or maybe our own nutrition. So the first thing is remember, we have to identify the cause of the imbalance. So no matter what the problem is, we gotta figure out what's the root cause of the problem, and that's what we're gonna try to identify, and that's what we're gonna really treat in order to make a difference. Now, in terms of primary prevention, remember primary prevention is we're trying to prevent things be from being a problem at all. Uh, we want to encourage a healthy diet. Um, the current dietary guidelines for Americans or my plate is what um, the government has put out for healthy diet op, um, recommendations. And then we want to encourage patients to have ad, um, regular physical activity, physical activity for 30 minutes on most days of the week. And your Davis book um, really has some, some nice guidance on these primary prevention, um, which are listed below on the slide. Now in terms of screenings, what kind of things do we screen for to look for problems early and catch things early so we can change them before they become too much of a problem? Well, we can do a lipid screen, checking for their cholesterol levels. We can check their blood glucose to talk about if their sugar is under control. We can do a body mass index to decide if they are underweight, normal weight, overweight, obese, or super obese. And then for infants, we can also check their glucose level. They're actually um, screened for a number of metabolic disorders before they even leave the hospital after birth to make sure there's nothing that they need to catch right away. And the uh, physician is also going to examine them for other congenital disorders that may eventually affect nutritional status if not caught early. So some of those neonatal exams that physicians do before those babies are discharged home, hopefully catch those things early so that there can be intervention and the baby can have a good outcome. Now in terms of collaborative interventions, remember again, the treatment really is gonna depend on what the underlying condition is. But most of the common strategies are going to include some kind of that dietary intervention, possible medications, or even surgical interventions. Now there are a number of dietary interventions available. Medical nutrition therapy are diets that are prescribed by a provider, like a doctor or a mid-level provider. There's basic therapeutic diets that you're going to see in the hospitals a lot, things like low fat fat or low salt, a calorie reduced diet, or a specific amount of fiber that the patients require to um, consume each day. There's dietary supplements like vitamins. We can offer tube feedings. Enteral nutrition is nutrition that goes through, not through the mouth. There's no mastication. Remember, mastication means chewing. Um, or even parenteral nutrition, where it goes not even through the GI tract at all, but through an IV. 
the picture here is of a peg tube, uh, a surgical intervention uh, that can create an opening directly into the stomach uh, where tube feedings can be done and then the patient can be fed through this peg tube. Now there are a number of special diets that you're gonna see on your hospitalized patients. We're gonna talk about these more in class, but some of the ones you're gonna see are most commonly are gonna be things like a regular diet um, or NPO. NPO is Latin for non per os, but what you need to know is it means nothing by mouth. Okay, so it means no medications, no liquids, no foods, nothing by their mouth. A lot of times our surgical patients are on NPO diets before they go to surgery. And if they can end up eating something while they're supposed to be NPO, it could actually push their surgery back and delay their treatment. So we want to make sure our NPO patients stay that way. Uh, table 27.5 in your Davis text has a really good explanation of diets that can be modified by consistency or by disease. So I'd ask you to pause here and take a look at that. And we'll be talking more about special diets in class as well. Now certainly there are bariatric surgery options uh, for patients who are morbidly obese and would benefit from you know, a quicker weight loss to gain optimal health quickly. That's a conversation between the bariatric surgeon and the patient. And usually those patients are on a treatment program which includes counseling and support groups um, and a, a weight loss on their own before they even have surgery to really support and make the new dietary changes stick. And there's a number of different surgical interventions that can happen. Um, to allow the patients to lose weight very quickly. There can be surgical complications, um, and then really the patients can have some nutrient deficiencies because they consume such small amounts of food that what they do consume has to be nutritionally dense and give the body what it needs. Sometimes you'll see patients coming in for things like vomiting um, after these types of surgeries where they're unable to keep food down. Now there's certainly some pharmacologic agents we can use when it comes to nutrition. There's different weight loss medications on the market, either over the counter or by prescription. Antilipid agents actually reduce cholesterol um, in the bloodstream. There's micronutrient supplements. I mean, there's whole stores that are just full of vitamins and um, different supplements people can take. Sometimes those are prescribed and sometimes patients are taking them on their own. And it's important to know what your patients are on. So ask them. Um, and then certainly parenteral nutrition is that uh, is the prescri prescribed IV medication uh, that it's really nutrition that goes through the IV rather through the GI tract. Here's a list of the interrelated concepts for nutrition, things like glucose regulation, immunity, thermal regulation, culture, spirituality, all of these things inter interplay with the concept of nutrition. Now here are a, a list of featured exemplars. Um, and the one we're gonna talk about specifically for this class is obesity, um, but there are a number of other exemplars here that you'll see um, in nursing throughout your career. And finally, let me just get my screen out of the way. Here is a quick uh, concept map that just gives you a nice flow sheet of summarizing the concept of nutrition.